Hello, my front porch friend. Well, you caught me on a busy day. I am actually leaving right now to head to the airport, flying to California to be ministering there this week for a conference, just outside Fresno, I think it is. But anyway, this morning while I was packing, had you on my mind, as I always do, and I heard an interesting word. Actually, I'll tell you how I heard it. While I'm packing, and I've been praying this morning, Lord, what are you saying to my front porch friends today? And mom, my mother had no idea that I was packing my luggage at that moment. And mother sent me a text and she said, I hear a word. And then she just put these two words, unclaimed blessings. And so I saw the text and I got to thinking about it. And I was thinking, unclaimed baggage. Here I am packing my bags. And I started thinking about what that would mean for you and for me. And I knew that it was the Lord saying to us, he has blessings. Just like he's loaded up these bags of blessings for us. And we've got to make claim on these blessings. No, it is important. In a few minutes, I will be in Dallas and then in uh, actually Fresno, actually, looking for my luggage. I'll be standing there at that baggage claim, important word, waiting for my bags to come. And you know something? For every person, there'll be a bunch of people standing there with me in Fresno in a few hours. And the very fact that we're all standing there watching, watching for our bag, waiting for our bag, and we know when we see our bag. See, I mean, I, you can't tell on this piece, but I've got other bags that's got like, I'll put like a certain color of a you know ribbon or whatever, so I'll know it's my bag. I've got my name on this one, Karen Wheaton, right there is my name. So I wait and I'm looking for my bag. It's my bag and I'll put, let all the others pass, but I'm waiting for my bag. It's all an act of faith. I've got faith that that airline took my bag and sent it all the way to where I was gonna be. And faith is, I've, I've already sent it, now I'm watching for it, I'm waiting for it, I'm waiting for it. That's faith. That's what heaven does. We pray. We make our request known to God. That's what Mark eleven twenty four 24 says. He says, you can ask for anything. Can you believe Jesus said this? You can ask for anything. Any blessing, whatever you need, ask for anything. And if he said, if you believe that you've received it, you can have it. Well, that's what faith is then. Believing that we've received it. That's what I'm doing when I'm waiting for my luggage to come. Now, when I see mine, I grab it off that belt in a little while and I'll take it with me and go. I don't know how long my wait will be. Sometimes it's a little while. But if I leave before my luggage gets there, you know what's going to happen? Those people that work there are going to go take my luggage. And if I don't ever come and pick it up, you know what's going to happen to my luggage? It's going to go to a place, even in North Alabama here, they've got this big warehouse. They've had it there for years. And it's called Unclaimed Baggage. Unclaimed Baggage. It's actually a great place to shop. Because what happens is when people don't pick up their luggage, it'll go to that place over there, Unclaimed Baggage, and they go through it all, put it up for people to buy. And other people come and claim what somebody didn't pick up. Well, that's kind of what happens to us. I just wonder from heaven, how many people leave before their promise gets there? I wonder so many times, how many people leave before your blessing arrives just because you got impatient and didn't wait it out? And your blessing has ended up on somebody else's shelf for somebody else to take. Oh, no, I would be devastated if I left that place, left that baggage claim, and let my bag, my blessing, be taken to some big warehouse, and my name in there, on a bag, in, a, in somebody else's warehouse, with my name, my blessing in it, and somebody else is getting it, because I didn't claim it. That's called unclaimed blessings. That's what mother heard this morning. Now, it reminds me of what James 4, 2 says. You have not, because you ask not. Then he says, you ask and have not because you ask amiss. Or one version, New Living Translation says, you ask with wrong motives. Now, see, a lot of people hear a word like this and they go, oh, that's just that name it, claim it. That's those name it, claim it people. Well, 
I get that sometimes people have abused this word. I get that. I've seen it. You have too. But sweetheart, just because people abuse or misuse a word from God doesn't mean you throw it away. The devil loves to take a godly principle and twist it so that people will throw away what's good in it so that they can point to how somebody made it something bad. That's why the answer to that is found in this. You have not because you ask not. So it first starts with asking, what do you need today, Swift? What are you believing for? Yes, we're believing for the prodigal to come home. Sometimes when they're gone, that's the only thing it seems like you're asking for. I've been there. But you may be something else. It could be a healing. It could be a financial deliverance. It may be restoration. It could be, maybe you are believing for a house for your family to live in. And sometimes there's people that be like, oh, you shouldn't ask for those kind of things. You shouldn't ask for that. Well, here's, here's, here's when name it and claim it is off. James 4, 4, 2 and 3 says it. You have not because you ask not. You ask and have not. Why? Because you've asked with wrong motives. The only time name it and claim it is wrong is when you've asked with wrong motives. That's what Mark eleven twenty four 24 is talking about. Name it and claim it is you ask and then believe. Asking is naming it. Believing is claiming it. Asking is naming it. Believing is claiming it. Jesus said to do that. And then he says, now when you do that and it's not working, then check your heart. Because if what you're asking for is so that you'll get the glory, you'll use it. Because sometimes, actually God doesn't answer our prayers sometimes. Because if he did, it would destroy us. Because if you're asking for something for your own glory or for your own attention, or with a motive of selfish or greedy ambition, then it would destroy you if God gave it to you. So sometimes you've asked and don't receive it because God loves you so much, he can't give it to you till your heart's ready to receive it. But that doesn't mean that you should never ask for anything because sometimes just people, I've seen people just criticize and criticize. There's a truck going by, let him go by. Sometimes people will just criticize people. Oh, just name it, claim it. They're just that prosperity group of people. Can I tell you something? Some of the most kind, generous, excuse the truck. Some of the most kind, generous, anointed people I've ever met are people that some of the religious church world Mark off, throw away, say, ah, they're just those, that old group over there. We don't have anything to do with them. And they don't know their heart. And sometimes these people over here, I don't have nothing to do with that name and claim it bunch. Yeah, and you have not because you ask not. And so you live with less and criticize those that God has blessed. Oh, honey, I don't want to do that. I want us to have what God desires us to have. And let's be thankful. Now, here's what I'm going to close our time with. God told Joshua, in the first chapter of Joshua, I think it's like Joshua 1-3 or something. Joshua, every place, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Every place, Joshua, on which your foot will tread, I'm going to give it to you. Come on. What does that mean? That means Joshua... You go out there, Joshua, and you start walking. Now, listen, wherever Joshua went, God's going to give it to him. He, and God tells him, I'm going to, you can go up around this way. You can go up over here. You, he'll, he'll, he kind of gave him the route. Okay? Now, had Joshua said, eh, I don't want that. That's too much, God. I'll just, I'll just walk around this little territory right here. God, I don't want to ask you too much now. Lord, that might be, that. oh, I don't want to. No, no. God said, Joshua, you start walking, and I'm going to give you wherever you walk. Come on, sweetheart, don't limit God. You ask and say, God, let my heart be right, but I'm going to start walking because, God, I, I'm believing for my city, for the kingdom of God.
Oh, God, and maybe you need a house. God, I'm just believing for that house. And so, Lord, you see my need, but you know my heart. And I'm trusting you, God, that you will give me what I need. But, God, you won't find me in fault for not asking. So I'm going to ask. I'm going to believe. I'm going to claim what you've called mine in Jesus' name. When I go to a building, whenever I believe it for a building, even for this ministry, you know what I do for every building I walk in? One of the first things I do, I walk in a building that I think we need for the kingdom of God. And every place I go, every one of them, first thing I do is I walk in it and I say, God, is it mine? Is this mine? Because I don't want any more or any less than what God has promised me or what God desires me to have. I don't ever want God to fault me for not asking and not believing. So what is my word to you today? I'm about to take this luggage, all these bags I've got right here. Let me get my bags. I'm about to get them all. And I'm going to call these our blessings from heaven. And you're not going to find me or my luggage at some unclean baggage place. I'm not going to have unclaimed blessings. Oh, no. When I get to heaven, I don't want to see any unclaimed blessings I missed. I want to have everything God's promised. And you do too. Let's do it together. Father, I pray for my sweet friend today. I pray that you will encourage her to ask or him to ask. I pray, Father, you would give us fresh faith. And Lord, whoa, I hear this. Thank you (coughs) that it is your good pleasure to give us the kingdom, to give us peace, to give us joy, to give us righteousness and to meet our needs. It's your good pleasure because you're a good father. Sweet friend, would you message me below? I would just love to hear from you. Please comment. Tell me what blessing you're claiming today. Tell me what blessing you are claiming. Or you can put in the comments, I'm not going to have any unclaimed baggage or any unclaimed blessing. I'm going to take all that God has promised me. That's the will of God for you. And I want to see you have that in Jesus' name. Who knows? Your prodigal is going to be one of these blessings. Your marriage restored is in one of these blessings. I believe that every need you have fulfilled. I've got to get to California. I love you, sweet friends, so much. I'll see you next week.